Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going straight to the point. I'm making um, back pork ribs. Uh, I like pork, but the ribs, they are really lean. And then on the side you can see it's chicken. Yeah, it's chicken. I did it because Olivia don't like meat with bones. So this is for me and uh, and that the other one is for Olivia. This is for me, Daddy, and then that's for Olivia. So you can see how it looks nice, right? I just marinated it overnight. So I'll take you to the procedure how you can get juicy, juicy pork ribs and crunchy chicken. Like uh, it's chicken breast. I, I bought two chicken breasts and then I uh, sliced them into cubes and then I marinated, I, uh, I marinated them uh, overnight with these ingredients like for the pork for the pork what I use so that you can give this nice color you see here I haven't popped it in the microwave yet I'll pop it in the microwave it's not cooked yet I just wanted to show you before I pop it in the microwave so this is how I did I got a uh, pork and the chicken so what I did um, I know I'm supposed to cook them separately but I'll pop them in together it's really tender pork it's a young pork uh, with a young chicken breast it's not that so within one hour it will be cooked and I marinated it overnight so it will be it just it doesn't take long to cook so the what I the ingredient that I used for the pork, you can see how the pork is it's nice. Or oh, maybe I should get a, a pork and uh, a fork and lift it for you to see it. You have to see this. Sorry, I wasn't prepared for this. Okay, this is how the pork looks. See? I don't want to touch it with my bare arms because it's not cooked. See? Hmm, the smell is delicious. So what I put in it, it's uh, mostly, uh, I can use barbecue uh, sauce, but uh, I like uh, the tomato paste. So what I do with my tomato paste, I take a cup of tomato paste, I mix it with a little bit of honey, yes, a little bit of honey, yeah, it's all natural, this one. And then I put a little bit of mustard and then ketchup or tomato paste, whichever works good for you. Or if you want, you can use a barbecue uh, sauce, of which I don't like. I just like to put my own taste in there so it can have some great, great tastes. So, and uh, another thing I put on it, it's uh, garlic. Garlic and ginger, it's very good. It makes, you don't smell that smell of the pork or the chicken. I don't like that smell. Personally, um, I like garlic and ginger and rosemary. Yeah, so you just crush them together. I have that mortar, you mash them together. And then you put a little water. So you take the pork. You take the pork and then you marinate it. You marinate it properly, like you put generously. Don't just put little, just put generously. And then after you put in a plastic bag, you know the ones you get from the grocery, like or the Ciproc papers, uh, bags, Ciproc bags. You put them in there. That's for the pork I'm talking about, right? I'll come to the chicken part. You put them in the Ciproc paper and then you zip them up and then you put them in the fridge overnight. You pop them in the fridge. The reason of putting them in the fridge, you know why it is that. Uh, oh, and don't forget, I, you can put um, salt and pepper, but mostly these things like mustard and the tomato paste, they are really salty. They have a lot of sodium in them. So I don't think like you need to put more salt in your in your star in your meat right because these ones they contain salt already so yeah but if you want more salt to taste you can add a little bit you don't have to yeah so you put them in a ciproc paper and then pop them in the fridge uh, for overnight and then the following day 
you preheat your oven to 375. I like it a little bit raw and all like 400 or 450 or above because I want it to cook slowly. I want the pork to cook slowly and tender so that it will be tender and so that the marinade will get in properly. So you pop it in the oven for 375 for one hour. For one hour. I know some people, they just food for a few minutes, but pork or chicken, they need to be really, really cooked well. It's not beef. Beef, yeah, people eat layer, layer cooked or whatever, or medium. But pork and chicken, they need to be cooked well. Okay, let's go to the chicken part. The chicken, as you can see, it's chicken breast. I just cut it. And the recipe for the chicken, what I do with the chicken, you can use the same, same things that I used here. The honey, the, the ketchup, the mustard or the honey, uh, you mix them together. And then for the chicken, for it to be crunchy, you need uh, flour. It can either be um, uh, all purpose flour or corn flour or rice flour or almond flour, whichever, depending on what kind you like. Me, uh, I like uh, rice flour, ongrain rice flour um, because of some allergies. So, and then for the chicken, you need to put a little bit of pepper and salt too and garlic to remove. But Olivia personally, she don't like garlic. So this one, I didn't put chicken, but uh, a chicken is good for, it makes, it tastes good and you don't smell that smell of the chicken. I don't like the raw chicken. Even now I can't stand it because I can smell it here. But um, I have to show you this video. So, um... So what you do, and then you put it in a Ziploc paper, the same, same procedure like you did with the pork. You put in a different Ziploc paper, and then you pop it in the fridge. And then, uh, let's say you pop it before you go to bed in the evening. You keep on turning it. Like, if the Ziploc paper was facing up, you make it face down. So the, the juice can get in the chicken or in the pork for it. Because if you put one side, they just bend on one side, and they just... Uh, it's there uh, on the bottom of the ciproc, so it won't get in. You have to keep on touching it and uh, massaging it. Yeah, massaging the chicken and the pork. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I think my chicken is ready to go in the fridge. Uh, not in the fridge. Oh, yeah, as you ciproc everything and you do everything now, you do what? You go, you pop it in the fridge, and then the following day for the chicken, yeah, I like chicken to go 400 degrees Fahrenheit in the oven because they need to be cooked well. It's a little bit hard, even though they say chicken, but I don't know if it's a young chicken or a older chicken, so it's better for not to take chances and just put it 400. Yeah, for one hour too, I like it to cook slowly, slowly until it browns. And then you can check with the with a thermometer to check if it's well cooked inside. Uh, but when you put uh, this kind of meat, not a toaster oven, you have to put in the little oven. The, the little oven, it's, the heat is a lot. So you put it in, you pop it in there, and then it will cook. So right now I'm going to pop it in for it to cook. And then we'll wait and see the results. Okay? So let me put it in the oven. This one. You see how it is? You let's see how it's gonna look like in a few minutes. Don't move an inch. I'll be right back. Okay. I'll be right back. And then you time it for 20 minutes. So, you see the ingredients that I used? Ketchup or tomato paste. The canned tomato paste. But I like ketchup because that, <coughs> excuse me, it doesn't have much sodium in it, so it's good. Mustard, it changes everything. I never knew this trick until I watched some YouTube, uh, uh, YouTube what? 
shows and I saw the secret about the mustard. Uh, mustard in hot dogs, I don't like it, but when it comes to the to the baking part, I love it. And the honey, when you're looking for honey, just look at the one which is natural. Don't if it's honey, of course, let it be natural. Don't go for things that has preservatives in them. So I'll be right back. Let me pop them back in the fridge because I don't want them to go bad. I'll be right back. Don't move an inch. Wait for me, please. and the chicken uh, like you can have with the baked potatoes you know the Ryanese potatoes the small potatoes you can have with those ones or baked tomatoes or you can make your own french fries it goes real well it's like barbecue chicken or barbecue pork uh, or you can have it with salad I don't like salad but people do if, to me it doesn't taste good Unless I I like salad, but unless if I put a lot of dressing salad, so what's the point of eating salad and then you put the whole bottle of dressing salad? I thought you're eating salad to avoid uh, to to maintain some weight, but you are putting a whole bottle of salad, so it's like you're eating your own junky stuff. So I rather not eat salad, but I like uh, maybe my letters in my sandwiches, not like a plate of salad or maybe raw salad with a plate full of chicken so it's like protein meat you know what i mean so meanwhile before as we cook the the meat is still cooking yeah i'll show you the 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 results so i have this other thing i wanted to share with you about it's about, uh, as you know, I have a one year old. Uh, sorry for mixing this topic with this one, but I have to do it. You, uh, not a one year old, a four year old. What am I talking about one year old? Olivia, hear this? I've been big struggle. So it's not a one year old. So when you're buying books for those kids, I would like to know what you normally, what you normally think before you buy those books. Because I've bought books, but luckily enough, nowadays there are a lot of books out there. So, and she likes, like Olivia likes to read books. So, we buy books like all the time. All the time we are buying books. Ours is full of books. So, I don't know what kind of books are good for a four year old. Because she has all these kind of books. But she seemed to enjoy them. You know what? I think I'll just continue buying whatever I'm buying for her because she is happy with it, right? Yeah. So, so like there is one, this one book I got it and I was really impressed about that book. And I'll show you that book because you might need it. It's for, okay, just a minute. I know this is funny, but anyway, you know this book, it's written what? I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's my hair. Okay, this book, <laughs> it's funny. So, you know we have to teach our kids, especially for us uh, uh, people of color uh, living this part of the world. We have to let our children love themselves, love the way they are, love the way they look. So, I like this book because it's really cute. Ah, look like this girl. She says, my hair is neat. My hair is wild. Woohoo! My hair is mine. Duh. In every style, 
and you can pop it out, you can pop it in, and, and then you all get these questions all the time. Oh, I like your hair. Is this your hair? No, it's not. Okay. I lock pigtails and bantu nuns. Yeah, we are bantus. Hello, right? So, our hair is kinky, very kinky. I love this hair. I love this book. It's a funny one. My funky brains, my bouncy rocks. Yeah, I'm reading this book so that uh, I can wait for the chicken to cook. But you can get it. It's a very nice book for either like a, a two and above year old. And then you can read the book for them. Especially for African American, right? Or Africans, yeah. Frost or twist. I like hair. That's why I'm reading this book. I like doing hair. Up or down, I pray princess. With braided crowns. My hair is mine. From curls to fops. You can look, but please don't touch. Oh, oh you don't want to touch. Brock hair, brock women hair. No, 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 they'll cut your hand. My hair is strong. It's full and thick. It's a lot of it. Hello. When it's too long, I go snip, snip. I like this book. I love my hair in every way. Special shout out to Mike. You brought this book to Olivia. Olivia loves this book. You are such a good friend. I like the way. I like the way you like me to mold Olivia. Thank you. So this book is very, very nice. I like it. It's fun, free, and totally mine. That's a book, that's what it's saying. A celebration of magical little girls with beautiful, bold hair. Shout out to all little black kings out there with kinky, fluffy, and twisted hair. Love yourself the way you are. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Okay? So, I think I'll go check that chicken. I think it's cooked. Is there one hour yet? No, anyway, you know how it will come. Yeah, you the way it just looked because it will cook very soft. Yeah. Today the weather is beautiful out there. Very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I can go, I can look up this book for this. It's called My Hair by Daniel Muller Cox. My hair is neat, my hair is wild. My hair is mine in every style. I love pigtails and bantu knots. My funky brains and my bouncy locks. Frost or twist up or down. I pray princess with braided crowns. My hair is mine from curls to props. You can look, but you don't touch. My hair is strong, it's full and thick. When it's too long, I go snip, snip. I flip my hair. I always lie. I love my hair in every way. I love it. I cannot change it or switch it for anything. I love it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. So let's go check the pork. No, we have to let it cook a little bit. But you know, I gave you the recipe and everything. So, and for the chicken, even if you want to put maple syrup in it, if you like it sweet, sweet, so that it will be like Chinese, Chinese chicken, you know, like the Chinese restaurant chicken. I used to love that Chinese food before, but not anymore. Now I like to cook my own. Cook your own food. You know what you put in it. Stop. But anyway, you can support those small businesses, especially now during COVID. Yeah, they need us. We need to do something to support those little businesses. Yes. Thanks for watching my show, my channel. And Ofre, I'll see you next Monday. I like
like to post my videos every Monday but today it's a Friday since I didn't post a video on Monday last week I decided to post it today so enjoy my video see you next time bye bye And please don't forget to subscribe on my channel. I need subscribers, please. Go and press that subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything. It's just... And ta -da! And it's a win-win. And when you need me, I'll support you.